Cheese.
hands up for some reason.
forward. Is that fun for him? Stop waiting to poo. Alright, we're all done. That was fun.
That's a lot of bubbles. Come over here and show me. Show the camera. Show the camera the bubbles. Disappears. Our research shows that smells often trigger the imagination. 
cool with the stamps. I'm cool with the stamps. He's sleeping. He doesn't hear me. I'm not, I don't think I did the stamps for us. <laughs> okay. Why are you trying to push through here? That don't make no sense. We can get the, the time transfer or whatever. Not much of a wine drinker, baby. Uh, maybe. I think they have the Middle Eastern instruments like the iPad. Let's go to Japan. There, halfway around the world now. Right? Oh, cigarettes. Some more cigarettes. We need huge vacuums wherever there's a cigarette place. You know, like a kitchen hood. Just, they need huge vacuums wherever there's a smoking area. Like your big kitchen hood. Miami! Hey, you're not from... You're cheating!
gotten here. Gordy Weaver to dare you in this. All aboard! All aboard! Oh my god, that screen's so dark I can't even pick it up on camera. There's a real pig right there. Come here. There's a pig peeing. <laughs> There's a pig on the loose. Don't touch the sand, no, no, it's got pee-pee. No. That's dirty. Yeah, all the animals pee-pee on it. Yeah, it's a brush so you can brush the animals.
Uh, the piggy. Brush them. The wrong way. Wrong way. Brush them this way. Like this. Brush them nice. Brush them nice. You want to touch them? You don't need the brush. You can just touch them with your hand. Look, he's heavy. That's where they come where they don't want anyone to crush them. They go in here. So they feel safe. You don't need to brush them. You can touch them with your hand. You want to brush them? That boy just brushed them. Brushed them. The, 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 the sheep. Right here. Brush them. Look at this guy looks like Cindy. Brush them. Put your hand through here. Is he soft? Yeah. There you go. Brush him nice. Says thank you. the wrong way. Brush him the right way. Feel him. Touch his hair. Touch his hair with your fingers. And a llama. Llama. He's just hanging out by himself. Hanging out. Llama. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's so they don't want people bothering them, they go in here.
Admiral Schroeder with you today. Please keep it folded up until you cross the yellow safety line on the ground. Then you can unfold it and head on your way to enjoy your time here at Earth Beacon Planet Watch. Let's try one more time all together. Jumbo! Jumbo! Jumbo friends, nice to meet you. My name is Roberto. I'll be your safari guide today. The Kilimanjaro Safari. A photo safari throughout the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. So keep those cameras ready at all times. Now, before we continue, as a reminder, number one, because there are three things we have to talk about before entering the reserve. Number one, please remain seated, keeping your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. We'll be passing by rough brush and some of the bushes have long thorns. Number two, if your friends look up above your hands, you can see our animal spotting guide. That will help you identify the creatures that we might see. And number three, please refrain from whistling or yelling at these animals. Thank you so much for their safety. Now, it looks like the warden is giving us the all clear right now to proceed, so let's begin our journey. <laughs> In the forest, the tropical forest of Itori. Mm. Now, this is where you can find the shy animals. Some of them have natural colors that even help them camouflage. Be on the lookout, they love to hide behind trees and bushes. Like, let's see, the okapi. On your right hand side towards the left corner, all the way in the back. It's a beautiful dark brown colored animal. But also look at its legs. It has stripes like a zebra. Discovered in 1901. Back then, some people believed okapis were mythical creatures. Nowadays, what a lot of people still don't know is that okapis are the only known relative of who? Does anybody know? Zebra! Giraffes, correct! Other Zebra. ways we can tell the similarities of all structure with giraffes, like the shape of their heads, and also the length of their tongue. It's about 18 inches. They even use it to clean their own ears. Ooh. Great. Now, from the okapi side, we cross to the watering hole where all the animals gather. Like the Easter Mountain Bongo on your right. Now, there's a little baby bongo somewhere behind the tree up ahead. Up there, you can kind of see her. The largest and heaviest forest antelopes. <laughs> Rarely seen in the wild because of that. They are nicknamed the Ghost of the Forest. On your left, though, Black rhinoceros Whoa, look at that thing. And heavy animals. They can weigh 3,000 pounds and charge up to 35 miles per hour, which is actually one of the fastest charges of any animal. That's the rhino, and it looks like the bongos are really active right now. And you can still see that baby on your right, on top of the hill. There she's very small. There she is, behind the tree. Oh, and it looks like the greater kudus are crossing the road right now. Oh, and it looks like all of them will be crossing the road in a couple of seconds. So we're going to make a quick stop right around here. Thank you for your patience. The greater kudus, on the other hand, as you can see, they are a little bit taller than the eastern mountain bongo. They are kind of the second tallest antelope, actually. Each one of those can leap eight feet in the air easily. And they weigh around 750 pounds. Sadly, it looks like with the antelopes, we'll be leaving the savannah. 
I'll be driving slow so you guys can take pictures. But as we leave, don't forget that all these animals call this forest their home. And sadly, and this is when things start getting serious, studies show that the bongo population alone has been reduced by 20% through deforestation. Loss of habitat or habitat destruction. That is the number one cause of animal extinction. So how can we help them? Well, we can start by using paper responsibly and recycling. Anything that helps our friends, the bongos and kudus, that rely on trees for survival. So please, keep that in mind as we now cross the Safi River, home of the hippo. On your right, one of the most dangerous animals in the wild. Dangerous because they're very territorial. Now you usually find them underwater. They remain underwater to prevent dehydration, overheating, like the hippo on your left. They even sleep underwater. Other times you will find them on the surface eating food. They can eat up to 80 pounds of vegetation, which sounds like a lot. But they can also weigh about 5,000 pounds, so they don't eat that much. Now I said before, yeah, they are very territorial. But inside this reserve, they share their space with the pelicans. The pink back pelicans. Colonial nesters, as you can see, they have a wingspan of 9 feet. That is wider than this truck. And they are called pink backs because during mating season, their backs turn pink. Pass the pelicans and any everybody to please remain seated. Because Luxo's on the left. The Nile crocodile. And of course, they're real. They are bigger and a lot less aggressive than the, well, maybe a, not that much less of aggressiveness than the average American alligator. Also classified as ectothermic, which means they have cold blood. The only way they release excess body heat is by keeping their jaws completely open. Still, we have a lot more to see, especially now. As we go up the hill, we get close to the African savanna. What animals can you find there? The popular ones like lions, cheetahs, elephants, and giraffes. Well, that's only part of the fauna. As part of the flora, this tropical ecosystem offers the baobab tree, or the baobab tree. It's on your right-hand side right now. It's a tree that can go leafless up to nine months storing up to 2,000 gallons of water inside its trunks. Because of this, they are nicknamed the Trees of Life. And with the Tree of Life, we enter the savanna, covering approximately 20% of Earth's land area, hosting the largest mammal migrations. In other words, take a second to look at everything around you because the savanna is blooming with life and it has a lot to offer. Now of course one of the main purposes of this research is to educate others on conservation. But how can you help such a large space with so many different animals? I'll give you an idea. Support conservation groups. Volunteer. Conservation groups like the Disney Conservation Fund by the way people that dedicate themselves on helping ecosystems throughout Africa so they can all remain as beautiful as this one for all animals, big and small. And speaking about small or smaller, on your left you will find the wild African dogs, also known as the painted dogs because of their unique markings. Related to the canine family, but they have four toes instead of five. Now they kind of look like puppies but they are actually considered the most successful hunters in Africa, with a 90% success rate. That is higher than lions and hyenas. Lions only have a 30% success rate. The funny thing is that you will never hear them barking. When they vocalize, they sound like squeaky toys. Pass the dogs and we encounter the sable on your left. The official emblem of the reserve, the sable antelopes. Their horns are curved backwards gracefully like swords, which they use to defend themselves. In our detergent, 
Poor animals like lions that might jump on their backs. Past the sable, and we are surrounded by termite mounds. These orange rock formations colonized by termites, made out of soil, saliva, and even animal droppings. Sounds a little strange. But other animals do appreciate termite mounds like antelopes, like the sables. They usually jump on top of them to use them as watching posts. But other animals like elephants and giraffes use them as scratching posts because they are hard as concrete. They can even support. <laughs>
are getting sad for them. Studies show that up to 96 elephants can be poached in a single day in the wild. That is one elephant every 15 minutes or so slaughtered for their tusk. And just their tusk, which is actually a really long tooth, mainly used for jewelry. And that's not fair for them. We feel like it's our responsibility to try and change the mindset of what poaching is and its consequences. A world without them. And we cannot allow that. Not for them. Not even for the end coli cattle who are doing right. We built a sanctuary. A haven. Where we can learn about them and they can also learn a thing or two about us. Because at the end of the day, we cannot imagine a world without them. Or a world without flamingos. Imagine that. Well, these are not your average flamingos. These are called greater because they are the lightest shade of pink. Born gray colored, as an example, there are three flamingos with dark gray feathers. See if your friends can find them as we go around. Now these flamingos were babies, not juveniles, and they will be acquiring their pink feathers within a year with their diet, which is brine shrimp and other creatures that produce a protein called beta-keratin. If you think about it, keratin, that is the same protein that makes your hair, your fingernails, and a rhino's horn. And with that, we cross over to white rhino territory on your left. These ones are a lot bigger, but a lot less aggressive than the black rhinoceros. They can weigh from 4,000 pounds to five. Another big difference between them is actually the shape of their lips. Black rhinos have really long and pointy lips, which they use to pull leaves from trees and bushes like hooks White rhino, oh, and there's a little animal on the right, called the water buck. We'll get back to them soon. White rhino, on the other hand, have large, broad, squarish lips, which they use to graze through the grass with when they eat. They're both gray-colored animals. And you know they live here, they, they made a huge mud pit. Next to the mud pit, it's cheetah territory. You can kind of see a cheetah if your friends look left to the left of those logs or trees, fallen trees. You kind of see the head. Of, there's one inside that little the little hut in the back. Kind of see it from there. They are the fastest land animals. They can go from 18 to 20 feet, or I would say zero to 60 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds. Wow. From 60 all the way up to 70, but the faster they run, the more tired these animals get. Logical, like us. 
The thing is that she does get too tired too quickly to they lack what we call stamina. But to balance what they lack in stamina, they have a really good eyesight, complemented by those tear black markings close to their eyes that reflect Lion. sunlight. That's why it's a lot easier for a cheetah to fight during daytime. Unlike lions, lions are way more nocturnal. And with that, we welcome you friends to lion territory. Or the Kobe. That is the name of the rock formation. But they sleep a lot from 18 to 20 hours a day. More active during night time. The darker it gets, the better these animals can see. Up to six times better, actually. We saw the lion. Where's the lioness? I think I see her on your left, laying yep. down as well. Sleeping. They are very important because they do the hunting. Very determined. Well, the lion stays back home with the cubs, protecting the territory. Mm. Now on the right, I see more animals, like more white rhinos, the same water buck. Bonta box and an ostrich, but we'll get back to them soon. As we go around, I know there's a second lioness. I'm trying to find her. Oh, there she is. She's actually on top of the gobi, even higher than the lion. Look up. And if you ever hear them roar, cover your ears. It is so powerful. You can hear these animals up to five miles away. Lions? Oh, it looks like they're a little bit tired right now. Next to the Kopi are the Beatles, defined as very small tunnels or caves made by very small animals with the purpose of killing. One of these animals is the Warthog, the largest deering mammals of Africa, and that's correct, Timon's best friend, Pumbaa. Pumbaa. Those little caves or bureaus were actually made by, made by them, by the way. Just with their feet and their tusk. That's amazing. Next to the bureaus, we'll find the Bontebok on your right. Very small antelope. Once thought to be almost completely extinct, by the way. During the 20th century, there was only 20 Bontebocks left. But thanks to conservation efforts by African farmers, they have been able to recover, which is really good news for the Bontebok population. On the ground, ostrich eggs. I'm missing the ostriches, I saw them earlier. Each egg weights three pounds, like two dozen chicken eggs. And it takes them around 44 days to hatch. Sadly, with the ostrich eggs, we leave the savannah. And we enter the last area, the Magadi Glen Forest. One of the newest additions to the reserve. Home of the yellow-billed stork. Now, if you friends have never seen yellow-billed storks before, they are white birds with pinkish-black wings and a really long yellow bill on your right, laying down. Both of them have a wingspan of five feet, and both of them are carnivores. Like other birds, actually, they eat small creatures like snakes, frogs, and lizards. But those two also eat other small birds. Yikes, circle of life. And with them, we end our safari. So we would like to thank you, friends, for joining us today at the Kilimanjaro Safari. We're going safari throughout the wild. I'm going to help you, dude. Here we go. Ah, there you go. You help, brah. Sure. Oh. 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 Dude, what are you doing way up there? Oh. Oh, let me come save you. Oh, oh come on down. Ben, what do you want to eat? Mac and cheese? Or peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Say cheese! Say cheese! Say cheese! Alright. There's a lot of people here, maybe. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs>
I just been winging it 
if you look around, okay, you're going to see hippos, which don't worry. They say they wiggle their ears just to show affection. Uh, but last week, they didn't capsize six of our boats. But you got nothing to worry about, okay? Five of them were lying.
そしてこれだ Mommy's just holding it for you. Adventure Island, Tom Sawyer Island.
behind us? Oh, cool.
Nana funciona. Con la sua seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos de las dos pies y piernas dentro del tren y cuide a los pequeños.
mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren y cuide a los pequeños. Gracias. Thank you. 
Wait, Raiden. One side. Thank you. One side. One side. All I can see is your back. <laughs> yeah. Ready and wait. Wait. Daddy first. Daddy's going first. Okay, wait, Raiden. Wait your turn. Hold that his hand. Up. Up. Okay. Go, 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 go. Eight. Nine. Ten. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Whoa, so many stairs. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. What's in here? Is this their music room? Is this their house? I got some nice china. Uh, you, want to sit? you can't get in. We can't go inside, okay? It's locked. What? Yeah, locked. Yeah, look at you. Oh, there's another bedroom in here. Maybe mommy can lift you up so you can see in there. It's somebody's bedroom. Wait, 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 Raiden. Let them go first, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm waiting for you. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, 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 wait. Daddy, go 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Careful. Keep on going. You got this. I'm waiting. Careful, careful. That's why mommy can't record it. That's the library. Careful. Careful. This one's hard. There are rocks. Here. Let me help you. No. Come on. Come on. Let's go, though. Keep on going. We're almost there. Yes. the kitchen.
Is that it? 